All right, Shalom. This is her one by Yasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp. I want to say, call Halayim, La Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai, by Hashem Harakah Kodash, my mouth. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and their elders. Shalom to you, Akim, and Nagwati, my children, that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Uh, this lesson is going to be entitled um, The Plumb Line. All right. The plumb line, measuring up to the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, being being in unison or um, in balance with uh, the spirit of truth, with the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, and the spirit of prophecy, and the spirit of meekness, and the spirit of faith. So this is Amos chapter seven. And I'm going to start at verse 7. But this is Amos. Um, I think he prophesied around the time he started prophesying uh, to, to Israel, even though he was from the tribe of Judah. And he was uh, basically a shepherd, you know. And um, the thing about Amos, uh, he was sent to Ephraim to speak to uh the, uh, the priest Amaziah and also uh, really to Jeroboam the second alright so Jeroboam the second and he was telling them about the Lord uh, judging them with the Assyrians he was gonna bring the, that the Lord was going to bring Yahweh was going to bring the Assyrians against yo what the fuck boy you see what I'm saying see Esau be tripping look try to open my fucking door Things happen though, it's all good. That's just... So, let's keep going. Things happen, it's all good. Um, so it says here, so now you have, um, you have Amos prophesying to, um, Okay, he had the same van I got. All right, cool. It was just, it was just a mistake. Now, um, so Amos was sent to prophesy to the nation of Israel, even though he's from Judah. So they told him, yo, go back to Judah. <laughs> they were trying to get rid of Amos because Amos told Jeroboam II that the Lord was going to destroy him. All right? Because he was being wicked. So the Lord set up something called a plumb line, meaning... Um, a righteous balance or an actual uh, example or a standard for us to line up to. And today, that righteous standard is Yahweh Shai, all right, out in the heavens and, it, and the faith that he showed upon the earth. So let's get into it. This is Amos chapter 7, verse 7. Thus he showed me, and behold, the Lord stood upon a wall made by a plumb line with a plumb line in his hand, all right? So a plumb line is basically, if you wanted to establish or build a um, a frame, like a door frame, or in front of the door frame, like the ceiling. Let me see if I, if I got any internet. Right, I'll try to put it up in post-production uh, about the plumb line, the picture of it, probably around this point right here. But the plumb line, it says it's a hook or a knock, which means a plummet or a plumb lead weight all right so you're hanging from a long string so you have four saving you have four corners on the ceiling or on a certain area on the ceiling like um, a cornerstone you know or um, an entrance of a doorway or a cabinet and you wanted to me measure the four corners that's on the ceiling one two three four you want them to measure to the same uh foundation that's on the ground to that square that's on the ground so you would make a, a, a you would have a line come from that corner and you would hang a weight called a plumb or um, it looked like a, a spinning top with a point. And that, wherever that point is at on the ground, that's where you will make your mark at. All right, so that way the, what's on the ground is lining up with what's up on the ceiling. And then you do the same thing throughout the, uh, 
throughout your measurements throughout the house as you're, you're building. So that's how you would make the balance line up with what's up top to what's up down the bottom. All right, so that's a plumb line. It would be a tight string hung by a, a, with a weight on the bottom of it with a point, like on a spinning top. And wherever that point was at on the bottom, it would line up with the, um, the corner of the squares up on the ceiling. So you would measure it down to the bottom and put the squares on the bottom. All right, so that's what the focus is. It says what? Um, according to most, a plumb line, and to others, a hook, meaning to be narrow. All right, so that's the plumb line. So the Lord put a plumb line. There you go right here. It says, the Lord, re where was that? Verse 7, thus he showed me, and behold, the Lord stood upon a wall made by a plumb line, man. All right, and that represents Yahawashai being lifted up. All right, and and the um, and that's uh, and then he dropped down the plumb line, which would be the measurement that we have to line up to in the spirit. Um, the Lord stood upon a wall made by a plumb line with a plumb line in his hand. See that? So Yahweh made the balance for Yahweh Shai, right? Set the standard for him. Uh, matching up from Yahweh Shai to Yahweh. And then Yahweh Shai had a plumb line in his hand matching up Israel to Yahweh Shai. All right, the elect of Israel, setting a standard that we have to follow and, and measure up to. To be um, and you, to be one in the spirit with Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, perfect alignment. And Yahweh said, unto me Amos what seest thou so this was in a vision and I said a a plumb line all right then said the Lord behold I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel and the Lord did that by setting up Yahweh and I will not again pass by them anymore now see the Lord was saying yo he's gonna set a standard and if they don't meet that standard then he's going to destroy Jake. And he, he warned, uh, told Amos to warn uh, the, the Ephraimite tribe. And then later on, they became um, increasingly wicked. They, uh, you know? And, um, and then later on, the judgment that immediately, not too long after the Amos chapter 7, Israel got judged. You know, the Most High brought up these Assyrian tribes against the land of Israel around 725 B.C. all the way to 722 until they took King Hosea into captivity in 720 B.C. of the Ephraimite tribe. So, yeah, Jeroboam got judged, Jeroboam II, you know. So, um, so they didn't want to hear this from, from, from the prophet Amos. Who was from the tribe of Judah during the time of King Uzziah of Judah? So they told him go back to Judah. They're like, get out of here. So J J Amos wound up writing it in words. He wound up writing it in words so they could read it. <laughs> so they didn't want to hear him talk. <laughs> so now the Lord said, what? He set a standard for us to have to measure up to, man. All right. And that standard represents that plumb line or that measure or that level or that balance. You know, which represents Yahweh Shai. Um, so it says, and the, so he's saying basically, man, you're going to do this or do that. This is your option. You know, so, the, so Amos was sent to warn the, the nation of Israel. Uh, ultimately Jeroboam the second and then you had um, he was also telling the nation of um, you know telling Jerusalem the, the southern kingdom that they should beware as well because the judgment that was going to come on Ephra, uh, the, the, the northern tribes 
all right so now let's get this other precept to back this up all right so now now you have the prophet isaiah that was sent to both um judah which, how can you say the northern tribe and the southern kingdom as well all right so he was sent to both like daniel he was just sent to the uh, the southern kingdom because the northern tree northern kingdom was already taken into captivity and ezekiel but then you have isaiah he was sent to both and he started prophesying around from 740 bc all the way until um around 701 bc all right so i think it was around that time during the time of hezekiah so um Isaiah was warning the nation of Israel, the, the, the northern kingdom, and he was also warning Hezekiah not to follow in their ways, not to listen to the false prophets, not to go down to Egypt for help. All right, and when they didn't listen, the Lord destroyed Egypt, <laughs> you know, with because um, the Lord said we weren't supposed to go back into Egypt. But around the time with, with Isaiah, with Hezekiah and such, you had Israel trying to make uh, join leagues with Egypt and take on some of their customs, paying them taxes instead of um, the Lord said, no, nah, they're going to go into Babylon. And that's when you get the whole battle of uh, Carchemish. In 605 BC, the Lord had uh, Nebuchadnezzar or Nebuchadnezzar destroy the Egyptian army and then ultimately Nebuchadnezzar took down uh, Pharaoh Necho II around 605 BC and you can read that in the uh, first Ezra with Josh dealing with Joshua all right the prophet the high priest so um you had Pharaoh Necho II then you had uh, Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon take over so the Lord brought down Egypt around that time. All right, and then in 665 BC you had the you had uh, Nineveh that fell. All right, so um, now all right, so Lucky is going. Um, you had Egypt that fell as well with Taharqua, and then later on around. Um, 612 BC you had the fall of Nineveh all right so now we're focusing on Isaiah who was sent to both uh, the nation of Israel and also Jerusalem which would represent the southern kingdom and he was telling them to not go into Egypt for help you know to trust in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai all right so um, this is Isaiah 28 and 16 now this was this deals with the promise and a lot of the a lot of Jake at that time they didn't believe the, what Yahweh was saying that he was going to set a plumb line in Israel. He was going to create or send Yahweh Shai and set a standard for us to follow, man. Since our people were breaking the laws and not following after the customs that we were told to follow. Isaiah twenty eight sixteen it says, <clears throat> therefore, right. Um, I'll start from 14. Wherefore, hear the word of Yahweh, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. See that? So he was talking also to, um, uh, you know, the rulers over there in Judah going into the time of Hezekiah. Now it says here, <clears throat> that and, the, and the Lord wanted to bring in um, Sennacherib against Israel. In, in, in what you would call Lachish. They took Lachish in 701 B.C. And that's when you get Hezekiah's Tunnel where you find the Paleo-Hebrew written on Hezekiah's Tunnel in the Lashawan Kodash, the true Hebrew. And you'll find the Father's name. All right, and it was written by the workers of Hezekiah in 701 B.C. that was um, fighting off the siege of the Assyrians from uh, Sennacherib. All right, so the Lord was warning us, and our people didn't listen. 
Yeah. And the Lord said, "Yo, I'm gonna lay a plumb line. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a. I'm gonna give you a balance. I'm gonna set the judgment in place. All right. I'm gonna set up justice, and you're gonna trust in that. And then I'm gonna set a, a standard in place that you can follow, of righteousness. And if we didn't follow it, the Lord said, "This is the judgment for that." And our people wound up not following it, do what the Lord said, and they got judged. And the Lord brought up the Assyrians against us and all, through Nineveh and also through Babylon. Isaiah 28 and 16, no, 14, 15. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death and with hell are we in agreement, see? So they made agreement with Egypt and with, um, really with Egypt, with the Egyptians. And, you know, or, or should just say uh, with sin. They made a covenant with these idol uh, idolaters. They were paying taxes to them. They started taking on some of their customs. So the Lord was like, yo, I done brought y'all way out of Egypt and you trying to go back into it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set an example for you. And you better follow it. And if you don't, and you don't line up with it, like the plumb line, then your ass is grass. <laughs> All right? Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we in agreement, when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. See, people thought that the judgment wouldn't come unto them because they were Israelites. They, they thought they were just, uh, that's why the Lord said that. Not because they're the children of Israel or they're the sons of the Most High. So they thought they were so special that they can um, follow the ways of the Egyptians and still be loved by the Most High and forgiven, you know, back then. That he was going to overlook it. So the overflowing scores represents the judgments. For we have made lies our refuge. So they made lies their bed. They made lies their safe house. Their safe house from Egypt. And this is the second Egypt, just like America. So two thirds of our people have made lies their refuge, but the elect have made Yahweh as their refuge. All right, our, our safe house. Let's see refuge real quick. This is refuge meaning shelter. Ma kaka. All right, ma kasa. That's what it is. Ma kasa. And it means from shelter from rain or storm, from danger or falsehood, man. And Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is our shelter from falsehood, from danger, from lies. All right, Yahweh, his, his name is Yahweh, and it's a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. But two-thirds of our people have made lies, meaning false doctrines, religions. They made all of that their refuge. So it says here, and under, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves, man, just like uh, Adam in the beginning. This is a good precept to match up with Adam hiding uh, under the fig leaves. All right, they made lies, they, lies their refuge, and under falsehood, they tried to hide themselves. Therefore, thus saith Yahweh, the power, behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation stone, and that's Yahweh Shai, the chief cornerstone. So the Lord laid the foundation stone, right, that we got to line up to, and a tried stone. So Yahweh Shai got tried upon this earth and he was tested and Yahweh Shai passed the temptation. He conquered it. Conquered death. A precious stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, man. He that believeth shall not make haste. All right? And that's what represents lining up with the heavens, meaning believing what the Father said about his son. Judgment also will I lay to the line. So the Lord is going to let justice or judgment be the measure. 
a verdict, a sentence, formal decree, divine law, justice, right, right, privilege, style. All right, so a measure, a manner. So the justice that represents what? Uh, Yahawashah. Human or participants. All right. So Yahawashah represents um, the line, the measure that we have to follow, line up to. What's that? Um, he said, measure the temple. Right? Let's get that real quick. Let me get something. All right. So there had to be a certain level of justice that the people had to uh, line up with back then. You know? As far as how they were dealing with their people. So us, we have a certain level of justice to follow after in the footsteps of Yahweh and judging and teaching our people how he came here he said what a bruised reed shall I not break and a smoking flax shall not be quenched meaning he didn't come here to destroy the Gentile Israelites he came here to teach them and heal them and the, and the ones that claim to be in the truth he ain't come to put them out he came to teach them hey continue to keep the laws but you got to understand you got to get the breath though you know and that's the problem they have the laws but they don't have the breath and even Without the breath, they can't keep the laws correctly. Like IUIC. All right? And righteousness to the plummet. So so he, he set up righteousness as the plumb line. So Yahweh Shah is righteousness. And he said, what? Our righteousness has to exceed the righteousness of the uh, Sadducees and Pharisees, the wicked ones. And people like IUIC and these um, fake camps that make merchandise of the people and teach lies, they have not surpassed the level of the, uh, the wicked Sadducees and Pharisees. By doing so, you have to go through Yahweh Shai. That's why Yahweh says, what? This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Like he was the, set up as the high priest, spiritually. All right, so Yahweh Shai is that measure. Yahweh Shai is that plumb line. He's that example that we have to follow after to line up with the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, meaning what, the hail of fire that the, that, um, the Assyrians were going to bring on the northern kingdom and on the southern kingdom. Um, just like today. You know, when these nations come against Babylon and they start to rain them arrows, them uh, ICBM and missiles, people think their lives are going to be their refuge. But they're going to be highly mistaken. The Lord said, let your idols save you in that day that you chose. Um, now it says... And righteousness shall be the uh, to the plummet, meaning to the plumb line. All right, that's the plumb line again. All right, it says level, leveling tool or an instrument plummet with a line attached. Ma sha kwalath, which means um, basically a plumb line, a plummet. So the Lord set up righteousness through Yahweh Shai as, as the standard that we have to measure up to, man. And that's beautiful. That's why he's in the heavens on the right-hand side of Yahweh till this day. He laid out the example upon earth. It says, And the waters shall overflow the hiding place. That's the overflowing scores that he spoke of. All right, with the Lord's bringing these nations. So today, that represents Esau. We say they're going to come in rushing as a flood. Well, that's going to overtake two-thirds of our people in these false camps and these Christians. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled. See, Jake made a covenant with Egypt, and the Lord's going to break that covenant by destroying Egypt, destroying this place called Babylon or America today, or Esau's power. And your agreement with hell shall not stand, man. See, the Lord broke their agreement in 605 B.C., just like he's going to break Jake's agreement with this place that they so love 
more than the Most High. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it, man. See, that? that's when the floods come through, the martial law, and they bring in all hell upon this place, according to Revelation chapter 6. Uh, Two-thirds of our people are going to get caught up in it. They're going to be trodden down by it. All right? All right, I'll read a little bit more just to get to this point. It says, from the time that it go forth, it shall take you. Whew. So even with the um, the recent experiment they was doing, it, it took some most of the people. Look at Cesaria, got him. So at the time they start pushing forward, like with uh, Klaus Schwab, he said it's going to be like a flood. Meaning they stepping forward. When they start moving, these people are going to be taken by it. Why? Because they're in fear. The Lord said he didn't give us the spirit of fear. He gave us the spirit of hope. And that's line, lining up with the same spirit Yahweh Shai had, hoping until Yahweh makes his enemies his footstool. All right? So it says, For morning by morning shall it pass over by day and by night, and it shall be a vexation only to understand the report. You know, so they ain't going to be able to understand the doctrine. You know, the doctrine that's being taught, the report. It's going to be a vexation unto him. For the bed is shorter than that a man can stretch himself on. Remember they said up earlier, they said they made uh, lies their refuge, man. So that that's the bed that they made. And that's it's like it's like somebody real tall trying to lay in a four-foot bed. That, like Shaquille O'Neal or somebody. They're going to be uncomfortable. All right. So there ain't going to be no resting place for him. And the covering, the covering is narrow were, real narrow, than that he can wrap himself in it. So imagine you had a, a sheet, but it only fit the middle of your body. And the whole body going to be cold, man. You're going to be basically uh, uncovered. You know, more discomfort. And that's what Jake is dealing with in this society. No covering. The covering that they tried to find up under Egypt, the shadow of the the shadow of death, today America, is is leaving them in discomfort, dis ease, while they're resting in this place, comfortable sleep. You know, uh, 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 discomfortable, uncomfortable. You know, tossing and turning like a nightmare. That's what this is going through hell but thinking this is our resting place all right this is uh first peters 2 and 19 for this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward yahweh endure grief suffering wrongfully man see we suffer in this society man uh, according to um sirach chapter 2 once you come to serve the lord prepare your mind and your soul for temptation man trials meaning diverse uh, temptations for this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward Yahweh endure grief suffering wrongly man for what glory is it and a lot of us have suffered wrongly in this truth what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults ye shall take it patiently but if when ye do well and suffer for it you take it patiently, this is acceptable with Yahweh, man. Showing strength, showing faith in the Lord. That let the most high handle things for you. That's lining up with the spirit of Yahweh, waiting patiently, enduring suffering and persecution that Yahweh Shai went through. That's the plumb line. For even hereunto were ye called, because Yahweh Shai also suffered for us. See, matching up perfectly. Leaving us an example. All right. So that cornerstone became the example for us on the bottom. You know, to measure up with, man. Not what not it like Christianity. Not do as thou wilt. Not in the masonry. Not in Islam. Not in um what is that called? Buddhism. You see, that dude just got caught with some little children. 
uh, kissing the dude on T, kissing the little boy on TV, telling him to suck his tongue, the Dalai Lama. So Yahweh Shai is our example to follow after, and whom people like Paul followed after, and Peter. Paul said, "Be ye followers of him, as he is follower of Yahweh Shai." I may have to get that. Who did no sin? See, we gotta try our best not to sin as much as possible and that's our little strength and the Lord will give us the rest of the strength in the kingdom and give us a white stone and Yahweh will look at us through the example and righteousness of Yahweh Shai he said he is our righteousness man not our own our righteousness is as filthy rags so we rehearse the righteous acts and we keep the law to the best of our ability so he did no sin neither was God found in his mouth all right, lies, no false doctrine. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. So when people hate you, you don't have to uh, try to hate them too. Brother in this camp, the bishop in this camp, uh, Kanak, he says it all the time. Um, I'm not going to match their energy. See, we have to match Yahweh Shai's energy. All right, spirit. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, man. And that's what we do. When the world turns against us, we turn to Yahweh Shai. When the world not turning against us, we turn to Yahweh Shai. <laughs> Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. As our light, the light that leads us through the tunnel. Looking at the world, you follow in darkness. All right. Who is who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sins unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed for say so we live unto righteousness now just like him for ye were as sheep going astray but now are returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls man the one that watches over us our brother's keeper all right, so um, we were sheep going astray, but now we've been put in order. Just like a carpenter that's building a building, and he sets up a plumb line upon the wall to, to make the perfect measurements with. And we have to line up with that. The Lord is lining us up with his spirit, man. All right. All right, so this is why 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, examine yourself. See, we have to examine ourselves with that measure. In the scriptures is that measure, that line, that you know, from Yahweh to Yahweh Shai to us. There, the spirit, that the spirit, the Holy Spirit, ultimately, the spirit of truth that deals with the elect. It helps to understand the scriptures. Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Yahweh Shai is in you, except ye be reprobates. All right, so if somebody's offline and we say going off, that's what it means. Missing the mark, missing the target, being wicked. That's sin. All right, so if we if we uh, we deal in this truth correctly, lining up with the spirit of Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, this house will be built. Um, perfectly that we're building uh, spiritually man alright but I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates alright so um, alright I'll end it with this um, Ephesians 4 and 7 but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Yahweh Shai. Wherefore, he saith, when he ascended up on high, just like you said, a cornerstone or a stone up in the heaven or on the ceiling, and you, you extend that line back, he said that line went out through the, all the earth, and he's gonna set a measurement to measure Israel with, and that goes into measuring the temple, right, the justice. You know, but we're going to be justified through Yahweh Shai. All right. So everything is about him. Now, wherefore he saith, when he ascended up 
on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto unto men. And those gifts are in the spirit. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended for into the lower parts of the earth? And that's when he was in the, uh, the tomb. That's what that means. He was in the tomb for three days, three nights, you know. Um, and then he rose on the third day. All right, so um, he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. All right, so he got more powerful by going on the right hand of the Father, man, by accomplishing what he was sent here to do and following after the plumb line that Yahweh left for Yahweh Shah to follow. He gave him his commands. And Yahweh Shah gave us those commands and left the plumb line for us to follow after. All right, Yahweh Shah is sitting upon that high wall being lifted up and exalted in the heavens on the right hand of the Father. And the plumb line is in his hand and he's setting it, balancing it perfectly with every elect individual around the four corners of the earth. Building his temple. All right. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. And he said, going to give us pastors according to his own heart. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Yahweh Shai, for the building up of the, of the church. Till, right? Here go that measure again. Until, see, we're doing that right now. You know, um, uh, helping each other to measure up to what the Lord requires of us. It says, what until we all come in the unity of the faith, man. That's the goal, being measured up perfectly, man. And of the knowledge of the Son of Yahweh unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Yahweh Shah of the anointed. You know, so we have to come into these qualities being meek. You know, uh, trying our best to stay, uh, keep the laws to the best of our ability. All right, doing the Lord's work, feeding the sheep, prophesying, you know, finishing the course, speaking the truth, letting no God be found in our mouths. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, meaning scattered and lost. And carried about with every wind of doctrine, like something swinging back and forth. Now you want it to stop and be still and know that Yahweh is the power and line up perfectly with the Lord, man. Meditate, he said, on these words. Meditation is better, is walking meditation, stilling the mind. All right? And uh, being comfortable in uncomfortable situations, being stoic in the midst of the storm. Why? Because we trust in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh even with our life. But speaking in the truth, it's like it, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive with their false doctrines. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in him into him in all things which is the head even Yahweh Shah he's up top and we're down the bottom and we have to line up with him alright he's the example so he left for us an example to follow alright I'm going to read that again 1 Peter 2 and 21 for even here unto were ye called man because Yahweh Shah also suffered for us leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. All right, so that's what we need to do. So that's the example of the plumb line, the example in Amos 7 and 7, and also Isaiah, I think it was 28 or, or 60, I can't remember. But um, they hope this is edifying, and uh, that's what the Lord is doing. He's bringing us to a point of alignment with his spirit.
and we have to let patience have her perfect work, you know, t uh, so that can happen. All right, so and he said we become new creatures. And he put his son, Yahweh, put the spirit of Yahweh shot into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. And he hears our prayers, and he's matching us up, making us pillars in his kingdom, in his temple. All right, with that, I'm going to say, Shalom.